Meanwhile, President Trump has admitted he is under, investiga <clears throat> excuse me, under investigation for obstruction of justice. He has done so in the most Trump way possible. He's done via Twitter. On Friday, the president tweeted this, I'm being investigated for firing the FBI director by the man who told me to fire the FBI director, which on, he then tweeted on Sunday, the Make America Great Again agenda is doing very well despite the distraction of a witch hunt, many new jobs, high business enthusiasm, massive regulation cuts, 36 new legislative bills signed, great new SC justice and infrastructure health care tax, tax cuts in works. President Trump clearly thinks this investigation is a lot of nonsense. And on that one point, Professor Alan Dershowitz of Harvard Law School seems to agree with him. Professor Dershowitz joins us tonight. Well, thank you, and you're Excuse absolutely me, right. <laughs> I don't agree with President Trump on a great many I know of you his don't. agenda issues, and you know I'm a liberal Democrat who voted enthusiastically for Hillary Clinton, but I think I'm a person of principle, and I realize that what the Democrats are trying to do to President Trump is exactly what some Republican extremists tried to do to Hillary Clinton. Lock her up, throw away the key, and the very people today who are pushing for Donald Trump to be investigated, indicted, impeached, would be on the other side of the issue if the shoe were on the other foot and if they were trying to expand the, the obstruction of justice statute or espionage statutes and apply it to a Democrat rather than a Republican. And I think we need right. a single standard of justice in this country. And I think both sides are trying to criminalize too much. If you disagree with people, throw them out of office. Don't elect them. But right. the idea of charging your enemies with political crimes is too prevalent on both sides of the political aisle. What fascinates me about your position, because I know you and have for a while, is that it is purely principled. You're not saying this because you, you're supporting the president or flacking for him or anything like that. Hmm. But can you be more specific? What are the charges that his opponents accuse him of that a president should not be prosecuted for in your legal Well, they're view? saying that he committed obstruction of justice by simply acting on his constitutional authority. He had the right to fire Comey. Comey acknowledged that. He had the right to tell Comey to stop investigating Flynn. Comey acknowledged that. So what is the obstruction of justice? If he had the constitutional power to do that, people compare it to Richard Nixon. But Richard Nixon told his staff to lie, probably destroyed tapes, and paid hush money or tried to pay hush money to witnesses. There's no allegations of any independent criminal conduct against uh, President Trump. It's much more like what President Bush did when he pardoned Casper right. Weinberger at a time when Weinberger was about to go on trial and might have pointed the finger of accusation at him. And nobody at that time really suggested that President uh, Bush should be indicted for obstruction of justice or impeached. So this is selective injustice against a particular president who was unpopular with Democrats, and it's just not right. So what do you think of the, I mean, given your position and given the fact that you are a law professor, presumably know the subject pretty well, how do you respond when you see the endless hours of poorly informed legal analysis on television suggesting sort of the opposite of what you just said? Well, I comfort myself by knowing that almost all of these people, if not all of them, would be on exactly the opposite side where the facts were exactly the same, but the shoe were on the other foot. So it's partisan politics. Look, every liberal and civil libertarian ought to be against expanding obstruction of justice. It's such a vague statute. And the people who want to go after Trump say, oh, if he had a corrupt motive, what does that mean? Do you really want the presidency to turn on a subjective definition of a corrupt motive rather than on objective evidence of bribery, lying, right. destroying evidence? So I think it's a protection because my argument is yesterday it was Hillary Clinton. Today it's Donald Trump. Tomorrow it could be you. You know, when Lavrenti Beria, the head of the KGB, met with Stalin, he said to Stalin, yeah. show me the man and I'll find you the crime. And that's what my friends, my liberal Democrat friends are doing. They're falling all over themselves, trying to find a statute that they can expand and they can apply only to Donald Trump, and then they're going to bury the statute and try to put it back in its crypt. For example, there was a period of time where they wanted to get him under the Logan Act. The Logan Act hasn't been enforced since 1803. And uh, there's a concept in law called desuetude. They wanted to resurrect it, apply it to Donald Trump, and then give it an honorable burial. But that's not the way the law works. The law works based on precedent. And what you do to Donald Trump right. today becomes a precedent and can be used against Democrats, independents, or anybody in the future. That's why all Americans who care about civil liberties, who care about constitutional rights, ought to be very concerned about the investigation that's being conducted.
conducted in targeting Donald Trump, whether you like him or not. I can't even imagine how many people must yell at you at dinner parties. I wish oh, I was there. Friends and relatives <laughs> alike. Uh, it's really amazing. But I'm used to that. I had that when I made the same position about Richard Nixon, and I've made the same position about other people. I'm used to being yelled at from both sides. And, you know, tomorrow it'll be the Republicans who will be furious at me and the Democrats who will be supportive of me because my principles will lead me to conclusions that help one side rather than the other. But I'm not doing it in order to help the Republicans by any means yep. or any more help the Democrats. I'm doing it because I care deeply about the Constitution and preserving a document that has served us well for over 225 years. We agree with you. And when you're on the other side, we'll invite you back. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Professor. Thank you.